Welcome to Overpowered's Path to Overpowered. You know what all the elements of the HUD are, you know our lingo, you know how to use our matchmaker, you know the spells, and now you know what viewpoint you enjoy the most. Next, we need to address the many faces of Populous and what they're good for. In this video, I'll talk about each game, and whilst this video is not to preach which of the versions is best, it is to give you a fair understanding of each version, as when you're new to a community, knowing a bunch of versions floating around can be infinitely more confusing and slightly intimidating as you worry, which version should I be learning? There are three game-ready versions recognised by Populous Reincarnated, 1.1, 1.5, and the Multiverse Launcher. So, here we go. Let's zoom through these versions and talk about the pros and cons to each version, and let you know which you should be playing. First, we have 1.01. This version is considered original populous, and that's actually something of a misnomer. This is what the professional scene has played for years, and it is what they are used to, and this is what they mean by original populous. The original populace didn't have the metagame that we've long since established, which coincidentally is the video after this one. Uh, each map had its own restrictions and additionally you couldn't even type during the pause. There were also crashes that players like Addiction could utilise, involving towers. If you want to see more of original populace being played, uh, you can check out this series here. It's only just started, and the creator is a little bit busy, but it is interesting to see the maps as they were originally intended. But we're talking about 1.1 here. 1.1 is the community accepted standard for populace of the versions that we play, and it is the closest to the day one CD we actually have, have here on Populous Reincarnated. It has been around four years and skills learned on 1.1 are easily transferred to the other versions. For a lot of players, this version is going to be attached to that surge of nostalgia. The days of old where they played Populous for hours on end. 1.1 is difficult to play and I'm saying that as a good thing because a lot of the professional skills players have developed have been honed in on this version as the original technological restrictions that are not the game's fault uh, force 1.1 to have some unusual behaviours that players then have to micromanage around. Why is that a good thing? Well, because practicing and playing in this version will make you a good player. Because this is the most popular version, this version is also good for getting more than one game back to back. In truth, if you want to be a pro, you've got to play 1.1. The cons of 1.1 are also many. The game is old and that shows in many of the bugs and glitches that people work around. There's object overload which causes spell loss or spells to not behave as they should. The pathfinding can be atrocious after a couple of earthquakes and braves are completely blind to the location of wood sometimes, making building and upgrading rather slow unless you manage it yourself. Next, we have 1.5. This version is notably very divisive. You'll find some people calling this game version beta, although it technically isn't a beta anymore. It's a force of habit for the community who have been around a very long time. 1.5-B is beta, 1.5-D is development, 1.5 is just 1.5, like 1.1 is just 1.1. Starting with the good things about 1.5, we have a number of bugs that are present in 1.1 corrected. You no longer lose spells, your braves can see trees, a large number of crash causes have been corrected, the pathfinding is improved, and although the pace of change isn't exactly lightning fast, the version is being worked on with patch notes, meaning that it's a version of the game that is actively being changed and fixed. With an expansive hotkey engine that supports a rebinding of old hotkeys and binding of new hotkeys, players of other real-time strategy games will find this version much more comfortable to play. Not only that, but there's an expansive single player engine which makes this build impressive for single player content. Just check out the spring pack and see. It also supports four new beautiful tribes for a total of eight players, 
and the minimap can be turned on and utilized. Now this version also is not perfect and I want to lead with the fact that it is not identical to 1.1. If you are used to 1.1, this version is different and attempts to tell you the same are foolhardy. It's not identical and does require adaptations for your playstyle. If you are used to only one version, the switch can be uncomfortable. This also goes in reverse. If you're used to all the new features of 1.5 and you only play 1.5, 1.5 will severely stunt your growth as a player and you will struggle to adapt and learn when you go back to 1.01. .01. Lastly, the rate of development also means a rate of new bugs. Bugs do get patched and fixed, so I'm not bothering to list specifics here, but sometimes you may notice some odd behaviours in 1.5 as you play. 1.1 is a more fleshed out game with bugs that have remained the same for centuries. It's reliable in its unreliability, whereas 1.5 may introduce a bug one day that just completely ruins the game. It's happened once before, but only once. Lastly, what happens when you take the good bits about 1.1 and some of the good bits about 1.5, smash them together and make an angry hate baby? Well, you get the multiverse launcher. The multiverse launcher is an incredible piece of technology built by a genius that we call toxicity. It contains the mouse fixing, hotkeys, and spell loss fixes that you might recognize from 1.5, but retains the originality of 1.01, .01, with the same wood engine and pathfinding challenges. I could talk for 4 minutes and 21 seconds about the multiverse launcher and all its incredibly good points, but uh, this chap has already done that, so check out his video here. Cons for the Multiverse Launcher are really only a matter of perspective here, so do take in mind that these are just my viewpoints. You may not consider these cons, and in fact I know that many other players do not consider these cons either. It's just a perspective. First, the Multiverse Launcher is single player only. Whilst I love single player content, it is yet another version that you have to learn and manage your hotkeys on if you float between the two worlds. Secondly, I don't like that the features of 1.1 that it has kept, with both the wood engine and pathfinding causing ever-growing rage. And lastly, because this is some genius level wizardry involving DLL injections, you will fight with whatever antivirus you have just to keep the damn thing on your PC when you first install it. But that said, the multiverse launcher really is an incredible single player technology, and you should enjoy it exactly as that. Anyway, those are the three versions you're likely to see when you hang around the Populous Reincarnated Discord, although official support for the Multiverse Launcher actually happens in The Beginnings Discord. I've been Lavenji, this has been Overpowered's Path to Overpowered. Bye for now.